and welcome to another Heart for PCOS interview, connecting hearts and cardiovascular disease throughout the month of February. Today, we have an extremely very special guest with us, Candice Lewis Carter. I am so excited to have you back with us again. Um, you have been such a great supporter and advocate for the PCOS community. Um, so welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Um, anything that I can do and spread the awareness with you guys. Thanks for the support for everyone that you guys, all y'all that you guys are doing. It's so greatly appreciated by me. So thank you. Thank you. So can you tell everyone just a little bit about your background, um, where you came from and how you found out about PCOS and how you got involved in the PCOS community? Yeah, so I've been in the bodybuilding fitness um, arena for about 15 years now. And so that was my expertise. That's what most people know me as on social media. Um, so that's how I kind of got started with just, you know, working out, fitness, healthy lifestyle. And then once I um, find out my diagnosis, you know, I wanted to definitely be an advocate for PCOS awareness. That's great. So um, when you found out finally that you had PCOS, what steps did you put in place to combat the symptoms uh, you were dealing with? Was it a um, like a long process or were you like, okay, let's go. I got this and let's start kicking PCOS's butt. So when I got my diagnosis, it came unexpected. I had no idea what PCOS was. I just was told and of course, being in a doctor's office, um, being told, oh, you have this, you're, you're, I was scared. I was scared. I didn't know. I'm like, something's wrong. I have something, something's wrong with me. So I, for some reason, I was so scared and I had no idea what it was. I couldn't ask the doctor, you know, what is this? you know, what, you know, I couldn't ask any questions. I was just so stuck. And I was like, okay. And I just left um, after my appointment. And then I started Googling and like, you know, cause I didn't have any questions to ask the doctor. And I was so scared cause I didn't want to find out something so traumatic. So I just was like very stuck. Um, so I Googled everything and I was so terrified. I was so scared. So my diagnosis came unexpected. So once I got it, I was in fearful mode for about a year of like, what to do? Am I lost? You know, what's going on with my body? Um, it was very difficult to even start. So, but once I was on the train of like, okay, this is something I have, let's find out about it. And the, another thing is one of my doctors or the doctor was like, don't worry about it until you're, you want to get pregnant. And at that moment, we're just going to get married. So I was like, okay, it's something I don't have to worry about. So it's not urgent, right? You know, so it was uh, very difficult. But once I got diagnosed, I was thankful for the diagnosis. Yeah, but it's, and, and you brought up a really interesting point because a lot of patients, when they uh, go to see their doctors, they don't provide a lot of resources and tools. You're kind of left to figure it out on your own. Um, and then you have things come up like, oh, well, you might have infertility, but don't worry about it. Come back and see me or, oh, you might experience weight gain, but just diet harder and you'll be fine. But that's not always the case. Again, it's it's a process and it's learning what works for your body. So how has exercise and nutrition played a role in dealing with PCOS symptoms and your overall health? I've always came from a fitness athletic background and how I kind of knew something was going on is because everything was not working anymore. So the training, the healthy eating, things just didn't work. And that was how I initially went into the doctor's office um, to get help and to get an IUD. And then they're doing some scans and stuff like that. So because I come from a nutrition background, I already was eating healthy. I already was working out. Um, so I had to figure out why is it things working now and then realizing like the insulin resistance and being pre-diabetic um, from one of my appointments. So trying to figure out not eating my eating for like how you look on stage in the bodybuilding, but eating for more of your health, more of to feel good. It's totally different from 
what I was doing when I was bodybuilding, eating to, you know, get stronger and all these carbs that you have to eat, all these proteins that you have to eat, um, trying to learn how to eat for my body for PCOS was a little difficult at some moments because I had to change completely how I was eating and the cardio that I was doing, I had to completely change that. Um, more is not always good. Um, and that's how I was kind of fighting it in the beginning. I was like, well, it took me maybe 30 minutes before to get ready. Now it's like two hours of cardio, three hours of cardio. And that wasn't doing anything for my health and my mental health as well. So it was difficult to kind of figure out was what was working for my body. But eventually I tried things and realized, you know, certain things work, certain things didn't work for me. That kind of brought up a beautiful segue to the next question I'm going to ask you because often, um, yeah, we feel either guilty or that we're not working hard enough because things aren't coming together. And a lot of that sometimes uh, comes with there being a learning curve because everyone with PCOS is individual and the symptoms are individual and even the treatment is individual. So in this process, how important did you find it was to continue a routine of self-care? Because you were talking about your emotional well-being as well as your physical well-being. Yeah, it was so important because what I noticed learning my symptoms, my own personal symptoms, I could relate my tiredness, which before I would say, oh, I'm just being lazy. Um, so I had a something to relate to why I was feeling a certain way which gave me a little bit more strength in knowing like, I'm just not lazy today, you know, or I'm not, I'm moody today. I had a reason why like, oh, I'm moody because my, for me, it was more of my eating causes a lot of my moodiness or if I'm eating tons of sugar or drinking lots of alcohol, I can feel the shift in my body and how I'm feeling where the depression will start to sit in. So I knew nutrition had to be one of the top factors for me to feel good and also working out. So when I didn't work out, I would feel more tired, more sleepy, more depressed. But even if I just got outdoors to do a 10 minute walk, I noticed my mood would change and it was good. So long as I stayed active, I felt better. So I knew if I was getting in these modes of like, okay, I feel like my blood sugar is dropping or I feel moody today. Let me just go outside and walk. And that helped. So knowing I could not fix my PCOS, but I could combat some of the symptoms that I was feeling. I knew I had to take my nutrition and um, exercise has to be so important to me because if that's not, everything else is bad. I, I couldn't care for my son. I couldn't be a wife to my husband. I couldn't be this person that I was training clients in the gym. Because my mood was down and it was a lot of cause from what I was eating or if I wasn't exercising. Yeah, no, it. I, I, I get it because there, there are some days where I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to take on the world. And there are other days where I'm just like, I don't feel like getting out of bed. And you want to know what? That's okay. Um, you don't have to be perfect all the time and you don't have to be on point all the time. You have to realize that sometimes your body just needs to slow down, needs to take a chill for a little bit. And uh there's always tomorrow. So I love that approach. So you are now a new mom and I know a lot has changed in your life. Many people think that, uh, there's not enough time in a day, uh, to find a sustainable exercise program. So how do you maintain that balance for yourself and fit all of the exercising and everything in with your, all the other things that are going on in your life? It's really difficult. And I didn't think it would be because Fitness is what I've always did. So I didn't, I wasn't, you know, I didn't think it would change much, but boy, uh, it's completely different. I, it's hard. It's very hard. Um, it's difficult for me to be like, oh, it's hard to work out every day because I was doing that every day freely, but I didn't have so many other responsibilities. So now I'm fighting like, okay, this is what I'm telling other people, like go work out, feel good, just exercise, just go out, walk for the family. Um, so I have to really back up my words that I'm, you know, telling my clients and things, knowing that it's just not enough time most of the time in a day to get those things done. So now I 
give myself a little bit more grace and say, okay, I couldn't train today. Let's go for a walk with the family or let me just go run around, play with Rue, just get my heart rate up a little bit or do, you know, some stretching or just some yoga or just simple as breathing, you know, for 10 minutes um, on the felt on the floor just helps, you know? Um, and so it is difficult. I'm in this phase now where I'm like, how do I get, how do I get everything in? And I realize like, I have to take care of me first. So I try to, on most days, at least two days a week, wake up a lot, 30 minutes earlier, breathe, exercise, stretch or something. I know that helps me to feel better for the day if I'm not on a constant workout routine. I love that. Yeah. You just, you, you, you find your groove and you get into it. I love that. Um, so since this is heart month, let's talk a little bit about PCOS and cardiovascular disease. Women with PCOS typically have a cluster of metabolic abnormalities that are risk factors for cardiovascular disease. There is irrefutable evidence that exercise mitigates cardiovascular disease risk factors in women with PCOS. So for someone who wants to improve their health by incorporating exercise into the picture, what recommendations would you give to, to them to getting started? And what types of heart healthy exercise do you enjoy doing? Yeah. So to get started, and this is what I did um, my entire pregnancy. I didn't really work out. Some days I just was like, give myself grace. And this is a time where I don't have to, but if I want to, I can. So I walk a lot during my pregnancy. Um, and I felt really good. I felt, um, you know, that vitamin D, the nature. So we would do a lot of like different trails around the neighborhood or find a new park that we could go to together. Um, so I would say if you're wanting to get started, let's just go outside and walk, even if it's on your street and then come back. The next day you might want to do two blocks or one block. So simple walking is amazing. I feel like it's 100% all underrated as an exercise. People are like, go to gym, do this, do all this stuff that you may not be familiar with. Walking is so good on your joints. It's a great um, exercise for your heart health. Um, so I enjoy walking, but I also enjoy doing shorter workouts, being a new mom. I can't spend an hour, two hours like I was doing for 10, 15 years. So as simple as um, a 30 minute or even 10 minutes of a HIIT exercise. So what that is, is you're doing something as say, if you're walking, um, say two houses from where you are, walk there and then jog back. So you're doing something that's low impact and something that's more high intensity. Or if you're simple as doing like um, two push-ups on your with on your knees and then getting up doing body weight squats. So something that's low and then something that's going to raise your heart rate. Um, I love doing because you can get a good workout in a short amount of time. So important to keep that heart beating strong. So that's a wonderful tip. We talked a little bit about having an off day, right? So how important is it to let your body rest sometimes? Um, because again, I, I feel, especially with, with exercise, and we touched on this a little bit, that um, people feel you have to go, 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 and you have to work out for hours on end. And like you said, that can stress the body out, which means it can impact our hormones uh, with inflammation. It can... Uh, cause our insulin resistance to spike. It can cause our androgens to go higher. What's the best way to prepare for that and allowing your body to rest? And why is that important? So it's important to one, have your joints and your body rest, your heart rate, like everything, like let your hormones balance out. Um, and I say, try to do like an active rest day. So if you're not in the gym or if you're not going outside walking, do some breathing exercises, do some stretching, just to feel good. I noticed for me to stay, and it's hard to say this because some, some weeks are good, some weeks are bad, but to help me keep a routine, I try to have an active rest day. So even if I'm just laying on the floor, just stretching or meditating, it helps me to feel like I didn't do anything for the day. And then the next day I'll work out. So it helps me to feel like, for me now in this moment, like the stop, the start, you know, I had 
maybe say three rest days in a row, then I feel like I haven't done anything. But if I can just breathe for three days, then it makes me feel like I did something to take care of me first. So it's very important to rest. Like, like you said, your androgens go high, your hormones are crazy and just good for your joints. I love that. Um, so another element of movement or exercise with PCOS is that we need to fuel our bodies. So we're able to exercise. What have you found are some of the best ways to prepare for a workout nutritionally with PCOS? So with what I like to do is have um, either a smoothie with a little bit of protein in there, even if you uh, protein isn't Sometimes proteins can bloat people or whatever. So I just say take half the scoop, just a little extra protein. A, gr a green smoothie is what I like to do before a workout. So about 30 to 45 minutes before I start to work out. So it gives me a little bit energy in the gym. Or you can have a light meal. So a little bit of maybe say grilled chicken with um, some spinach, maybe a little bit of sweet potato um, that'll help feel your workout. So when you're working out, it has enough, you'll have enough energy to get through it. And then that way, after your training, you can kind of eat another small meal. So that way you don't feel um, too full before your workout. So always give yourself at least 20 to 30 minutes to let your food digest. But knowing that whatever you're going to eat before the workout is going to fuel your workout. So not eating, you may, you know, some people will think, oh, I don't want to eat because I don't want to be too full on my workout. Well, that is the opposite effect that you want to have. You want something on your stomach so that way you can get through your workout and you're feeling good. You're not getting lightheaded, not getting dizzy. So definitely have enough um, water while you're training as well. Make sure you're hydrated. Hydration, hugely important. And I always hear everyone always saying water, 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 especially with PCOS. So that's a great tip. So Lastly, I wanted to know why is PCOS awareness and joining campaigns like Heart for PCOS so important to you? It's so important to me because before I found PCOS Challenge and I felt alone a lot, um, not knowing anyone else, anyone else with PCOS um, at the moment when I first um, got diagnosed. Then I found out my sister also has PCOS, but before that, like I just felt alone in my research, even if I was Googling things um, on YouTube, you just feel alone. There's no one to really talk about it. Um, you're not seeing anything online back then. Now, um, joining a PCS Challenge and being an advocate, um, I'm lifting my voice so other, one, other people can have a resource to go through and go to, to just find simple information or knowing that, hey, maybe, not all the doctors will understand what you're going through. Try another doctor or here's some resources that you can um, help you on your journey. And before I got involved, I didn't have that. So now I feel like there's a team, there's a community around me. I'm able to help others just by just say, hey, try this. This is something that I found that works for me. Maybe it'll work for you, but just know that your PCOS is individual. So try different things and hopefully that will work. And I have seen that people will re re have reached out. Actually, the other day, someone was reaching out to me and I just said, hey, this is what I'm taking. This is what helped getting some working out. You know, um, maybe if you're carb resistant, um, you know, try lowering that, try eating your carbs before or after a workout so your body processes it um, differently. So yeah, so it's very important me important for me to raise my voice so that what others can have a resource as well. Yeah, it's it's so important. Um because one of the things that I've noticed uh with the community, it's not as if our support system around us doesn't care or doesn't understand, but sometimes going through it with people with other people who are going through it, uh it's a different vibe and a different feeling uh, when you have that support and that understanding. So really vital. And I'm so, so incredibly happy that you're part of our community because you have made a profound impact and use your platform to raise awareness and cannot thank you enough for that. So Candice, I would love you to tell everyone, how can they connect with you, find you and learn more about what you do? 
Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram. That's one of the biggest platforms that I'm on. And it's just eye candy fit beauty. Um, I like to share some of the workouts that I do on there. Um, and it can, oh, so usually I'll have like a beginner workout, intermediate, and then advanced. I like doing that. Um, and I really try to make sure that the workouts that I'm sharing is something that you can do in a short amount of time. So 10 minute workouts, 15 minute workouts. And yeah, that's where you can find me on social media. And I try to share what I'm eating, what I'm doing now postpartum, or once I was pregnant, there's a lot of, uh, prenatal workouts there as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Please follow Candy. I'll make sure that all of the information is along with this interview. Uh, so you can connect with her through Instagram and she has some awesome videos. Um, I'm obsessed with her Instagram. So <laughs> Candy, thank you so much for taking the time to, again, raise awareness, to share your journey. Uh, and I have a heart for you and thank you for having a heart for PCOS. Thank you so much.